Okay, so here we have a uh, Sony PlayStation Slim. This is the uh, newer model, but not the new, new model. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, upgrade the hard drive in it. This has a 500 uh, gig, so half a terabyte uh, hard drive in it. And that hard drive uh, by its stock standard is a 5400 RPM drive, which means it re revolves the discs in it spin at 5400 times per minute, uh, which makes it dog slow. And at uh, half a gig, or sorry, sorry, half a terabyte, it also makes it uh, quite small. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with a one terabyte uh, drive. In this case, uh, this is a Seagate Barracuda. You can see this is a two and a half inch drive. And in particular, this is a hybrid drive. So let's go over the different kinds of drives you can put in here. Uh, firstly, you can put in, uh, there's a drive bay that you can bolt on the top and I'll have a picture of that here. Uh, and then you can put a three and a half inch disc in. Uh, well, you can add a three and a half inch disc. Uh, I don't have that and I don't want that. It's ugly and expensive and just unnecessary. Um, the next thing you could do is put in a standard spinning disc that's just larger than the uh, half a terabyte that's in there. And uh, that'll work just fine. That'll just give you more space. Uh, the next thing you could do is what we're going to do, which is put in um, a hybrid drive. And a hybrid drive is a spinning disc with a whole pile of memory on it. And that memory makes it run faster. In addition, uh, the drive that we're putting in is a 7200 RPM drive. The discs are going to rotate at uh, 7200 uh, revolutions per minute. So quite a lot faster than the 5400. Uh, super cheap drive though. Uh, so not very expensive. The other option, uh, the last option is to go, to go to is a solid state drive, an SSD. And you can put that in, that'll work just fine. Uh, the only advantage to an SSD, well there are two. One is they're more reliable, but drives typically don't fail in these PlayStations. Uh, they're just not driven that hard. So I wouldn't be uh, too concerned about that. And secondly uh, is speed. Now you think I'll put a solid state disc in, it'll run a lot faster. Well, true, it will boot up faster, uh, but if you check the benchmarks, and I'll put some up here, you'll see that it actually doesn't improve the boot that much. It's not that dramatic over a 7200 uh, uh, spin disc, and the cost is actually substantially more. So uh, let's get to it. So the very first thing you need to do is get a second disc. So one, you need a disc that you're going to put in the machine. The second is another drive that you can back things up to. So here, I, this just happens to be a one terabyte drive, but really anything that's over the amount of storage you have on your PlayStation will work. So you take the drive, you plug it into either of the ports on the front. And that gets to another point, by the way. Another thing you could do is you could simply expand the system by using the USB port on the front. Apparently after system 4.5, I believe that was the number, don't hold me to, but 4.5, 4.7, something like that. Basically what you've got now uh, lets you do that. And you might think, well, but the, you know, running off an external disk can't be as fast as running internal. Well, that's also debatable. Um, the original versions of these Sony PlayStations, Sony PlayStation 4s actually ran on the same bus as the external USB, which means it, it won't be any slower. Uh, they've fixed that, uh, but it's not dramatically faster, even if you have a later version of the same unit. So the, the long and the short of this is, yes, you can plug it in and you can now make that external drive uh, usable uh, as, you, as um, just as usable as your internal disk for expansion, but why not just sub in a disk? It's extremely easy to do. Okay, so let's show you how to do that. So you can go to settings and then down to devices and down to USB storage devices. And you can see that this is just a uh, drive. Uh, it's actually showing a little smaller than I would have expected, but uh, regardless, I can click on it and I can format this as extended storage and then I can just use this uh, as a PlayStation uh, drive. And then I would be also able to go into the configuration and say, save all future games and future configuration onto that drive. That will not affect what I have on the original drive Okay, but I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to uh, uh, pull the existing drive that's inside the unit out, and I want to put in this nice new one terabyte. All right, so I'll plug the drive into my Windows 10 PC, right-click on the Start button, and select Disk Management. 
If you get prompted for GPT or anything else, just say yes and, and let it do what it wants to do. Now you'll notice that the drive shows up here as NTFS and NTFS, a bit shockingly, is not supported by Sony PlayStation. So you have to reformat it as FAT or as XFAT. There's file allocation table stuff. You don't have to worry about it, what it does. It's just a different file format. So all you do is right click on the, on the drive and select format. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference at all. But this does matter. File system needs to be XFAT or FAT32, FAT, whichever. It needs to be a FAT, a file allocation table, not new technology file system, NTFS. So make sure XFAT's the newest, use XFAT. Okay, there we go. And it's going to format. This will happen very quickly. And it's done. You can see here it's labeled XFAT. Now I'm going to go back to the PlayStation, plug it in, and we're going to back it up. So I have my USB drive plugged in. I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to go down to system and I'm going to select backup and restore right there. I'm going to back up. It may prompt you to, uh, there it is, it may prompt you uh, to uh, back up your trophies because I'm taking uh, all of this uh, on the drive. I'm not worried about it getting lost. Uh, also, the two users that are listed there don't really use this machine, so it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So, um, but you could go, you could follow its suggestion and go and back it up onto the Sony PlayStation Network, uh, but I, I don't want to, I don't care. I'm going to select yes for this, even though it didn't really ask me a question. There, oh, it's finished. Okay, now it's giving me the list of what it's uh, ready to back up. And you can see on the right side, it thinks I've got 708 gig free, which is a bit odd because, oh, it's free space after backing up. There we go because that is about a terabyte drive. Uh, so let's just click next. And uh, I don't care what it says, so I'm just simply going to click backup. There you go, now it wants to restart. Okay, so what's actually happened there is the Sony PlayStation copied some files onto the uh, external drive and then it's booting off of that external drive and it is starting the backup. Uh, this is about the uh, time that I was expecting to take several hours. Obviously we're not going to have you wait here um, and uh, we'll continue uh, when this is done. So while my Sony PlayStation 4 is backing up uh, I've gone to my PC as you can see and I need to find the operating system for my new hard disk, because of course a brand new hard disk will not have the Sony PlayStation software on it. So, pretty straightforward, go to Google, Google download Sony PS4 OS, OS standing for operating system, then go down to initialize PS4 system and reinstall. Uh, you can ignore almost everything on this page, except this little guy here, how do I manually reinstall? In safe mode, so click on that, and it says, well, uh, what you need to do is download the PS4 software update, which you can see right here. And you want the update or do you want the entire thing? Well, I want the entire thing. So I'm going to select PS4 system reinstallation file. And that is going to start bringing down this PS4 update file. And while it was downloading, I plugged in a USB stick uh, where I'm going to copy the operating system file too. And you can see here, I need to have it uh, formatted as FAT32. Then I need to create a folder called PS4, and then I need to create a folder in that called update. So let's do that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is check the file format because I'm pretty sure it's not what PlayStation wants. So it's easy to do. Right click on the start button, select disk management, and let's see what it is. Oh, no surprise, it's NTFS. It's a This is a fairly large stick, so yeah, it's not a big surprise that it's uh, NTFS. So if yours says FAT32, you're good to go. Just skip this step. If it doesn't, just right click on it and select format. Doesn't make any difference what you call uh, what you call it, but it has to be FAT32. Start, click OK. Make sure that that perform quick format is turned on. Otherwise you could be here for a while. There it is. Now I need to create a folder called PS4 and a folder in that called updates. Let's go create that. Right click, new folder. PS4, and then go into that and create a folder called, right click, new folder called update. There we go. Now, just take your file, right click on it and select copy. 
Then go to your USB stick, go into the PS4 folder, go into the update folder, right click and select paste. Interesting pro note here, apparently everything has to be in uppercase. So PS4 update and the name of the file, PS4 update.pop, all has to be in uppercase. So make sure it is, otherwise it won't work. Okay, this is going to take about three minutes to complete. So I'm not going to sit here and make you wait. We're going to skip it. Two, one, yay. Okay, there we go. So it's copied. That took about, uh, oh, a good hour and a half. Now what we have to do is let this thing restart. Then we power it down. We pull out the old disc, put the new one in. Boot up off of the USB stick that contains the operating system. That'll transfer the operating system onto the new drive. And then we restore the data back. Sounds like a lot of steps, not that hard. Okay, so we're gonna power it off. Actually, first we're going to unplug the USB drive because it's not necessary. Then we're going to power it off. So you don't wanna put it to sleep, you wanna power it down. Okay, there we go. Now let's pull it apart. Okay, so with the slim, it's particularly easy to do. Just take your nail or a knife and put it in there and just pop this little guy off. This little back cover. Let me try to get it from the other side. There we go. There, I just pulled it up from the other side. So as you can see, it's just a uh, piece of plastic, nothing too serious. And you see in here, there's a nice little pull to rip this drive out. So there is a uh, Phillips head uh, screw in here and you simply need to pop that in you will or pop that out You do need to use uh, some smaller tools uh, The uh, traditional stuff you have probably won't do it. So let's just pull that out And when I say pull that out, I mean unscrew it the screw will Come out and you can just pop this out There it is Isn't that happy now? Yeah traditional there's four screws around there I'm gonna pull those out. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch it. We'll advance this. Now, if these little uh, rubber grommets come out, they're just shock absorbers. Don't worry about them. You don't really need them. Uh, it's a good idea to have them, uh, and they'll just slide back in, so don't sweat it. And we just pull this drive out and put the new one in. So let's look at this one first. HGST, you don't know who that is, but uh, that's actually an excellent drive. That is, uh, Hitachi and uh, that's now Western Digital. So um, You can see this one says 05 June 16 so it gives you an idea how old it is But it really is a terrible drive as far as very good for reliability very bad as far as speed This is uh, as it says here just a 5400 rpm drive Which is awful and on a SATA 3 gig connection. This is as cheap a drive as you can get that will still work this however is a 50 a 7200 spin drive it's probably not quite as reliable as that uh, one but it's uh, excellent it's still excellent okay, here's one of those little grommets that pulled out I'm just gonna pop it back in here just slide it in all right so again make sure the circuit board is facing out and that the connectors are facing this end okay so when you put it back in remember that it goes in tray down and circuit board up so let's pop it in and if you don't feel it slide in it hasn't then you can put the screw back in the side pop the plastic cover back on not required by the way just a nice idea so just pop it in you'll hear it click just work your way around there it goes click and it's back now what we need to do is plug the USB stick into the front, power it up, put it into safe mode, and install the operating system from that stick. So let's do that right now. Okay, so I've plugged it back in and plugged it into the HDMI on my TV. What I need to do is plug my USB stick into one of the front ports. Uh, it doesn't make any difference which one. Put it in there. And uh, we need to get this into safe mode, and in safe mode the wireless doesn't work, so you need to use your charging cable. So just take your charging cable, plug it in. There it is. 
and plug that in as well. So now we press and hold the power button until we hear it beep. And let go. And that should put it into safe mode. There we go, safe mode. Connect the controller uh, via USB cable. Press the uh, power, uh, press the PlayStation button. So, I took a little break there because the cable that this shipped with, uh, that the PlayStation shipped with, uh, was not helpful. Uh, I needed to change, as you can see, to a much longer cable, but uh, the length really wasn't the issue, it was just the, the cable itself. So, you probably don't care, but uh, the cables have four pins in them, two for power, two for data, and uh, so even though the cable may charge the unit, it may not be useful for communicating. And apparently that was the case with the cable that shipped with it. Um, I was able to charge the remotes, but I was not able to um, uh, press the buttons and have it control anything. So what we're gonna do here is go to initialize the PlayStation, which is reinstall the so some software. And it says connect to USB, 702 or later, which is no problem. Initialize. And uh, here I'm using the right and left buttons. You would think it would be the joysticks, but it's not. There we go. All right, and the answer to this is yes, I'd like to wipe it all out because this is a new disc. So say yes. My guess is that what this is doing, and I don't know this for sure, it's simply copying that PUP file from the USB stick to the drive, then it's probably going to reboot, then it's probably going to do the install. So this is not 99% complete. This is most likely 99%, um, yeah, there we go. 99% complete copy. <laughs> now I'm not doing anything here. I'm not touching the remote other than the handle and I'm not taking the USB stick out yet. I'm just going to wait. Here we go, software system update, woo -hoo. I expect this will take a few minutes. Well, this sounds happy. So this should be like I just bought it from the store. Like the dual show shock controller. Yeah, okay, so we've already got that done. So let's fire it up. Uh, I'm positive it, so I'm just gonna press the power button, there we go. In my case, I'm English. I'll just use English US, that's fine. Set up internet connection. So I'm gonna go through this, uh, the rest of the setup without taking your time. I'll just speed through this and we'll get back when we're at the restore point. All right, so let's get this going. It picked up user one, just a generic user. We don't obviously want to be user one. We want the settings. And now we want to go down to uh, system and then restore system. And before, of course, we get to restore, let's pull out our USB stick with the operating system and put in our drive that contains the backup. There it is. Blue light there. Well, maybe you can't, but trust me, it's there. And let's go down, back up and restore, restore. Isn't that nice? Restore, restore, uh, you're restored after restores, if return to current state, blah, 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 blah. After you select yes, the PS4 will automatically be restarted. You betcha, buddy. Let's go. Now, this is not going to take two minutes. This is going to take about, uh, my guess is a solid hour. Uh, we, the hours is not completely full, so yours may be closer to two hours. We should be back to our old PlayStation with a much larger disc and have this upgrade completely finished uh, within, um, let's say less than two hours. And I'm not gonna make you sit and watch the rest of this. Uh, let's just sit and check the start. And okay, now what we're going to do is 
walk away because this is going to restart a couple of times and it's going to just keep pulling files in. All right, so this is finished and it's rebooted and look at that, it's all happy. So what I, what I can do now is I can unplug the USB drive and I can unplug the cable that I had because I don't need that anymore. Now I'm just back to what I had originally and there are the profiles and life is good. Now just for the heck of it, let's go into settings. We'll go into settings and we'll just take a look at the storage. So we're pretty happy with that. Also this will boot up about, um, if the benchmarks are accurate, I would say about 20% uh, faster, uh, which makes me happy. Of course, now regardless of what disc you put in, it will not affect the speed of your game. The games are all set to run at the same speed, uh, otherwise you'd have some pretty unfair advantages. All right, that's it. If you have any questions or concerns, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.